Hey YouTube, so we are about to start recording the podcast. You're listening to the How to Decorate podcast from Ballard Designs and uh, we're going to have an extra little segment at the end of the show talking to our guest Valerie and Roger, our lighting experts here at Ballard. So uh, go check that out if you haven't already. Okay, so we're doing something a little bit different on the podcast today. We get obviously tons of designers in here and um, we have had some requests from listeners that they want us to maybe deep dive into a particular topic. Um, you know, because I think a lot of times we talk about lighting, for example, here and there, but we don't have it all sort of wrapped up in one episode. Mm-hmm. So we have our in-house lighting experts, Valerie and Roger, here today. Mm-hmm. That's Valerie. And that's Valerie. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were confused. Also known as Richard. Don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they are going to answer all of our many questions and try to yeah. thank essentially, mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna do our best. Mm-hmm. This episode will be twelve hours long. Yeah, um, yeah. so buckle up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so okay, Valerie is our merchant, but she's also. I mean, you sort of lead. Like, what styles do we have? What colors are they gonna be? What sort of sort of like more of the aesthetic. Right, so I manage the lighting assortment at Ballard and do um, work with a couple of teams to design and produce new products for the assortment. Like this chandelier? Hello, beautiful. What about those lamps back there? That was before my time, but they're lovely too. (laughs) (laughs) And then Roger, you do all of more of the technical aspect. You take care of um, making sure everything in our store is is hung and lit exactly. and wired properly. Right, the lighting in the retail stores and also when it comes to what Valerie does, she, I call Valerie and her group the pretty. Mm-hmm. They do the pretty part of it and I do the mechanics. So I'm concerned about how does the hardware go together? How easy is it gonna be for someone to install it, an electrician or a DIY? Because I'm sure a lot of our customers likely install the chandeliers themselves. So it's just making sure the um, that it goes together well. Because in addition to the lighting part of it, I also write the assembly instructions for mm. almost all of Ballard's items that require assembly. Lighting. Give them your cases. personal email address right now. Right. So if they Indeed. have any issues, they can exactly. follow up with yes. you, <laughs> Richard. I spend a lot of time in the process of assembly every day. You know, so for when it comes to lighting, it's the, it's the back of house stuff that I'm more interested in and that I like. Although I do like lighting as well. I love it. It's a passion. Are there things that you want to do in design <laughs> that you can't do because Roger stops you? Because they're logistically uh, not possible? No, we usually go to Roger to get help with how we should construct something to make it as easy as possible to be installed for the light bulb to be able to change, etc. So he's really helpful think, in that way. And we've only ever hit heads, I think, at the, at the canopy level, you know, at the part where it connects to the ceiling. Mm. Because she'll want a rotted chandelier that has like a pipe that goes all the way down. She wants the pipe to go all the way to the canopy because it's of aesthetics but when it comes to installation it's better to have like a loop of chain or what we call a lock buckle he wants that big ring and Mm -hmm. it's not pretty you you (laughs) hear the way she says that there's not a lick of judgment in that (laughs) that big (laughs) ring yeah it's a ring but it makes it easier for an installer they can see the cord when they're trying to get it through but we've compromised we negotiate yes we do we do a really good job with that and pivot bars you know to make sure that you can like an instant for this light up here for the brinkley getting the light bulbs straight you know sometimes mm. they're not exactly straight so I've talked them into putting a pivot so that you can pivot the bar lights around to make them straight these so. are all things that I did not oh. even know existed is no. that so if you yeah. are like you hang it on an angled ceiling the actual chandelier will hang straight an angled ceiling or for whatever reason let's say that the it's shipped and for some reason it got slightly bent you know mm-hmm. the not that it's going to get that bent, but it just it's a little bit off. Now, some people it's look at something perfect. and mm-hmm. you go, that just doesn't look right to me. And I, if I could just move that so it's so that we have the flexibility so to move it. you can judge it. You can judge it and you Yeesh. can clean it. That's the other part of it is making it oh. easy to clean. Right. Yes. Oh. So, yeah. Okay. Well, how about we start with how much light you need? Because I think that oh. is something that, especially when we get questions and people send in photos of their house, and granted, they're not necessarily lighting it properly just to take the photos, but that's a question we get a lot. How much light do you need? How much is, is there such a thing as too much? And you can look around the photo too and say, oh, they only have one lamp. True. That room is way under lit. Yeah. I don't think there's really <clears throat> such a thing as too much. Um, I think it needs to be layered. 
So mm-hmm. I think you have your general overhead lighting, and then you have your task lighting, your accent lighting. So you want the lighting coming from all different areas of the room. And then um, something that we talked about is, you know, you can really use a dimmer to help. If it is crazy bright in that room, you can yeah. really pull it down to the level that's attractive to everyone. But I think it really depends on your end goal for that room you know if it's at a work desk you want to have that task lighting right you know you want to start with the overall chandelier that gives off general light um but then you want to be able to really focus or if you're trying to show off a piece of art you want to really show that with a picture light or a sculpture with up lighting um so i think you kind of have to layer it on to make it it look really warm yeah so should it is it a rule of thumb that it should be at different levels in the room physically do you mean like, the hanging the light? Well, no, I mean, like, should or, I have something up high and then lights around here and then lights around here? I've never looked at lighting like that myself, you know, and I know I'm a lot of no one, no lighting, one listening knew what I was doing with my lighting hand, person. But I, oh, yeah, tall, different medium, levels. low. <laughs> so, yeah, something near the ceiling, something like mid level, and something near the floor. I've never done it. I've layered light in, in the room, I guess, at eye level or lower, you know, or, you know. Do you not believe in ceiling light? As far as some people don't like a hanging a hanging light can lights can lights yeah I think here's how I look at can lights there's there's two there's there's some rules to can light for me the number one rule (laughs) is if you have can lights which I like to have them they're in my house have them on a dimmer yes that's most important Mm. yeah and for me you may not like this but I call them the cleaning lights those are the lights (laughs) that come on for cleaning you know I don't use them very often now in one of my rooms I put in. I, do you guys know what trim is when it comes to can lights? Cans Just are, tell us. Well, a can. <laughs> There's a hole in my ceiling. We know, ceiling. Yeah. but we want you to tell us. Anyway. Well, they call they call it a can light for a reason because it really, when you take the trim, the little ring off, it uh-huh. is just looks like a can stuck in the ceiling, mm-hmm. and that's where the socket is and the light bulb. But that trim you can take off. So if you're in your home and you don't like the way your your lights look, you more than likely can remove the trim and change huh. it. And so what I did in my house is changed a lot of the standard downlight cans to directional, their new LED directional um, lights, trim sets that just snap in. You just plug them into the existing cans up there, push them in, and then you can aim these onto a piece of furniture. You can put them onto art. We turned them for the Christmas tree this year. We aimed two of them oh. right onto the Christmas tree so we could dim the lights and we put a dimmer on the Christmas tree. So we could cool. dim the lights on the tree and then illuminate the tree so you could see the ornaments. So mm-hmm. I think can serve a purpose like that. That's how I like them. I like them in the kitchen and yeah. I like them in the living room, kind of on bookshelves. I like them on my like countertops while I'm working. So in for the utilitarian work purposes yes. or to highlight something. Right. I like them for those two purposes, but then for other tasks or anything I like you know to spice it up a little bit with a cute accent lamp mm-hmm. um, right. oh the thing that light. I did at my house is I painted that little trim kit to match the ceiling okay great oh. yeah you know, I have uh, two rooms that have particularly dark ceilings and it was like white lifesavers right I couldn't stand yeah. it. they're sticking out mm-hmm. so it really helped a lot That's well funny. if you've yeah. looked if you has been to a, a big box store and taken a look at what trims available now with, with LED technology when you're existing cans, you can change the trim. But some of the LEDs are these panel lights, which are just flat. I mean, it changes. There's no more lifesaver. There's a small ring, but it's more flat with the ceiling. Yep. And that entire part illuminates. So there's not some ugly, what we call a reflector bulb, you know, that you're looking at an ugly bulb up into up in the ceiling. It's, it's more smooth. So there's a lot more options with that as well. Okay, so I know that that it kind of differs room to room like as a general rule how many light sources do you need i mean cans and a lamp is that enough or are we talking i know um one time miles told us 13 which seemed Mm kind of crazy i've heard seven a lot um i think you know if you think about it and if you want your chandelier you want like two table lamps you have maybe a couple of cans but i mean you can probably drop it down to like three to five but yeah. I think anything less than three is not very great it's not enough yeah. yeah I mean have you guys heard the term and I'm sure it's been around a long time but it, um, light fixtures or hanging lights I guess in particular pendants, are the jewelry of the house mm-hmm. jewelry of home decor yeah. that's how I look at them so with that said I don't use a hanging light as a primary light in a room I never do even in mm. the dining room there's a chandelier but it's on a dimmer and I will dim that down as low as I can get it to it's practical but again layer with buffet lights um, lamps in the room that they're all on dimmer so it's it's layered in 
I'm reluctant. I'm not one that's going to turn my put in, you know, really bright bulbs in a chandelier and turn it up full bright because you can't see it. These ladies spend a lot of time designing the lighting here at Ballard. And so when you see how pretty those chandeliers are, you want the lights to be dim enough so you can enjoy it and look at it as a piece of art, see the structure of it, not be blinded by it. Oh, like so if it's too bright, it's, it sort of glows at you and you can't see it. Yeah. It oh, blinds you. Sense. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was curious too. Um, well, I, it's an interesting point about not thinking of your chandelier as your light source. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have thought about it that way, but it is a good point. You should kind of get more of your lighting from, like don't rely on your one fixture to light the entire room. Right, you're gonna yeah. layer in, right. yeah, so you, if you have that a reading lamp, you know, put it near a chair for reading. You know, you want to accent. You, there's a dark corner you want to draw your eye to. She mentioned art lighting. Mm -hmm. I love art lighting. I love to have something on the wall that, like, I have relics on the wall, like an old, in the uh, part, um, it's the interior of a player piano is on the wall, and that's illuminated. So you're looking at all these intricate workings, and it's illuminated. It really draws your eye to it, and it will illuminate the floor and any furniture in that area. Even the table surface is illuminated by art lighting, so it's a great way to to layer lighting into mm -hmm. any dead corner i think if you add a light it suddenly has more light right yes yeah, so it brings the energy for sure mm -hmm. right. i also think of it as well especially lamps i feel like are the most um flattering mm -hmm. so well that is what bulb you put in them right true. true but it's it's more flattering to have a light come at your face from <coughs> eye level versus oh, down above? man so yes. it adds 10 years yeah right <laughs> so <laughs> for does. everyone that invites me over we can't please afford that just turn <laughs> the lamps on yeah, yeah. Especially be... vanity lights. I mean, they really True. say like you should put them on either side if you have the room in your bathroom instead of overhead. It's just so much more flattering mm -hmm. to the face while you're getting ready. Well, the most flattering is reflective lighting, in my opinion. Like putting a um, reflector bulb in a lamp, like a table lamp. What instead does that of, mean? Yeah. Well, instead of putting a standard bulb in, you put a directional reflector um, bulb. You know, the, like you put in a can light. You just put that in your lamp. So, Wait, it's, what what is it? What does it look like? What is it? Yeah, I know. It throws, well, d like in, when you're looking at a can light, if you look up at a can light, it's the bulb that looks like a headlamp in a car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that uh -huh. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That yeah. shape. Mm -hmm. But if you put that in your lamp socket, all that light goes up to the ceiling and it all reflects back down into the room, which I think is a very soft light. It's still coming from above, but it, because it's reflective, it's not as harsh. It doesn't throw the shadows. It doesn't add those years. It actually is a little flattering to have reflective light. Yeah. For all those Hi. selfies you take, Karen. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, okay, if I get on I'm so line beautiful. and I Google reflector bulb, it's if you look yeah if you look uh, if you're looking online for that it's going to be what we call a par bulb um, some people just say par but it's for parabolic something reflector or something mm -hmm. that's got it. you call yourself an expert yeah. Come on. it's got Gosh. it's got it it's got a built-in reflector but it looks like a headlamp they're very common and you can okay. get them in LED as well but that's something I used and to you do and you get dimmable and low wattage and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and I know you guys, and I noticed on your agenda you want to talk about um, light bulbs, and that's a whole different story, but yeah, it's, I That's think, his favorite. Yeah. Light bulbs. Well, let's I get into they it. they make or break. Yeah, oh, they do. Oh, you can you, and make or break. I mean, I look at some of these beautiful chandeliers we create, and I've seen some of the color of LEDs people put in them, and, and no judgment. But no, you're allowed. It doesn't look good. It's ugly. Yeah. Okay. I must tell you I that yeah. oh. my husband just replaced all the cans in our kitchen, and oh, we God. came home, and they're all blue. Nope. And my mm -hmm. you seven said, year old oh, said, "Why go. does it look like Target in this room?" Here we go. And <gasps> he said, God. "This light is for function. I am chopping. I am cutting. I need to see it. You have the adjoining room, which is the living room. It can be all warm and nice and happy here." I'm getting down to business. Well, so he thinks he needs the blue. blue. It's functional? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. sometimes in the big box stores, they have like little words on them that say, relax, task. Oh. You know, instead of like really their water, their temperature. Right. Yeah. Instead of their, what their temperature is. Mm. And so, so I think it, it's like, I don't want to relax. Right. He's like, no, I'm blue. getting down to yeah. business. Right. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Okay. I'm so I don't have time. What do I need? 2700 is the key number. Yeah, oh, so we're going to go into LEDs now. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Talk about it. Ugh, okay, so LEDs are so fun. I think what's happened is because all of us have <laughs> grown up with light bulbs and we speak of light bulbs brightness and wattage. That's mm -hmm. the language we speak. Right, and right, right. You guys probably already know this. And it's book. wrong. It is. Well, it's it was now. it yes. was correct at the time, but wattage is actually the amount of energy or power that a bulb is using. Okay. So it uses 60 watts of power. It's very inefficient. So like a standard 100 watt light bulb, it produces, I think it's 2% of it is light, 
and 98% of it is heat. Wow. So, so that's, we're paying to make heat when really all we want yeah, is light? Yeah. I mean, can you, have you ever had a 100-watt light bulb on yeah. for a while and incandescent and then try to unscrew it? You can't touch it. Christmas yeah. light bulbs, all of that stuff would burn mm-hmm. things. It would burn lampshades. Yes, for sure. Which we know from our lamps. Yes. And critical radius. And is that why our Christmas trees die? Term. With the old lights on them? Because they were burned. And they don't have lights. any roots. Yes. <laughs> but even little incandescent <laughs> mini lights That's a small part of it as well. It could be the roots. Well. Chopped down and all. Sorry, go ahead, Richard. No, that's okay. So... <laughs> Just because kidding. we've been trained on wattage, what the manufacturers of the LEDs have done for us is when you go like into a Home Depot or a Lowe's and you go to the light bulb aisle, you'll see LED on the package and you'll see 60 watt and LED 40 watt, LED 100 watt. Well, they're not. It's You can use this rule. It's like 10%. So if it says on, the, on an LED box 100 watts, it's not going to use 100 watts of energy. It's going to use approximately probably 12 to 15 watts, something in there. But it's just trying to tell our old brains how bright it is. Right, because we're thinking, we look at 100 watts, and we think, oh, we know how bright that is because we trained in incandescence, but it it doesn't work that way. When you're buying an LED, you're you're talking lumens, you know, which I think it's, when you're buying an LED, I use CBD. Everybody knows what CBD is. (laughs) No, what is it? CBD oil, yeah. So it's color, (laughs) brightness, and is it dimmable? That's the D. So is it dimmable? Because I think it's very important that you always buy LEDs that that are dimmable, because if they aren't, they're going to blink and flash and do all kinds of stuff. And you're going to look old? You're yes. Gonna look crazy. <laughs> yes. Most yes. importantly, I mean, let's crazy. get real. Yeah, you're gonna look crazy. So, <laughs> so when you go in there, we were just talking about color. So color is is um, well, we'll talk about the C color. Color is um, Kelvin, and Kelvin is a temperature. And if you remember mm-hmm. science class, we talked about things. You don't remember science class. Science class. Karen didn't go to class. <laughs> she did. Just, oh, just yeah. sewer. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kidding. She's Do we brilliant. need to talk about this? <laughs> That's another, another podcast. Karen. Yeah, different How podcast. I disappointed my parents. <laughs> Karen Mooney would not go to school. Yes, so different. fill her in on the Yeah, yeah. tell yeah. us more. So Kelvin is a temperature reading for, for heated metal, heated steel. So if you think about heating a piece of, a small piece of steel, when you heat it up when it's first when it's cool it's orange mm-hmm. and as it gets hotter and hotter you've heard the term white hot yes mm-hmm. so the higher the Kelvin number the whiter and bluer the color is so it's going to be white hot so Kelvin just think of it as degrees and temperature if it's cool like if you get an 1800 Kelvin bulb it's going to be like Halloween orange mm. and if you get a 6000 Kelvin bulb it's going to be blue white like operating room kind of lighting stimulating oh so, I just knew I liked 2700, but I didn't mm-hmm. know why. 2700, what they've done is they've gone back to incandescent terminology and calling it warm white or soft white. So right. when you're looking in the in the store, you'll see those terms, soft white or warm white. What I do is look at the box, and it has like what looks like a nutrition label on it, like you, if you're going to mm-hmm. tell how many calories are in something. And it'll have the, it'll tell you how many lumens it is, and it will tell you what the color temp is. And that color temp, Kelvin is usually on a scale, like a temperature scale with a little arrow, and it tells you where it falls. Most of the time when you're trying to mimic an incandescent, which is what I recommend with all of our um, Ballard fixtures because I write the instruction sheet, is choose 2700 Kelvin because it's warm white. And Mm -hmm. it is the most flattering to you and your skin tones. It's the most flattering to the finishes that they spend so much time trying to finalize on. So, Mm -hmm. And although there's someone here, and I will not name that person, that works here at Ballard. I will not say it, but they love... They love 5,000 to 6,000 Kelvin bulbs. Their entire house, no matter what the picture is, a lamp. It feels it has, so cold. You've got to tell us. Right. Yeah, they now you have to tell it. us who. Well, I can't tell you who it is because I'd have to name them, and I'm not naming them, but they're on my team. But, so. oh, wow. Wow. That's narrowed it down. Yeah. And he's <laughs> listening to this podcast, so he knows who he is. Oh, we should work on getting him <laughs> fired. I told him that I would it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, the cool thing about it on our website is that for all the bulbs that we sell, we sell only LED bulbs. And for each one, the alternate image on the product page really shows that Kelvin temperature scale as well as the equivalent um, incandescent. So it kind of guides our customer through um, the transition from yeah. the incandescent to LED. There's some good LED. information on our website about um, light bulbs. Do right. you, do you only yes. have 
good ones in the assortment? I mean, do you have the really cool blue ones or just the 27s? We, the majority of them are around 2700. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a couple that are outside, just maybe. They're probably 3000. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I mean, for the most part, we have that. And then also on, there's a little link and it goes to a whole post that talks to you about the language of moving from incandescent to LED and mm-hmm. kind of walks you through all of those things. So those are awesome tools that we have on the website already. Yeah. Oh, yes, you, okay, Karen. you go. Uh, this is a personal question. I can save it for later. Do you want me to? Is it related to this? Related to light bulbs, sort okay. of. Okay. Well, I just have a question about... I'll, I'll jot it down. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, so, okay, I have a dilemma in my house. Oh, that so I hers want... is personal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's uh, fine. But it really does tell. This podcast has a dilemma now. We only have this podcast so we can get our own houses. Right? <laughs> yeah. It relates. All right, it relates. Go ahead. Okay, so basically, I have these consoles in my living or my kitchen, and it says to have a 40 watt bulb in it. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that's not enough brightness. Mm-hmm. So my question is is it bad to get a higher wattage than what it suggests? Can we disobey okay. the instructions? Yes. Yes, that's a good you... question because that is on my list of notes. Yes. And, and would you like to take that one? No, I know you love bulbs, but you can switch over to LED. Yeah. So and then, then you can get a brighter look and Got not it. burn down your house. So yeah. when it's that's on right. there, when it's referring to wattage, it's just referring to heat. Is that it's, what it's referring well, to? Well, when, when we go back to what we said about, what I said about wattage, wattage is energy. So a socket, when our vendors create a socket and wiring, it's designed to handle a certain amount of energy before it will overheat, burn, catch on fire, look mm. like a toaster. So if it says a 60 watt max, that's that's a 60 watt, that's how much energy it can handle before it will overheat. It can probably handle a lot more, but that's its max. So if you're looking at an LED, and let's go back to being in the store, and we see 100 watt LED, well, again, you used a 10% rule. That's about 10 watts. So yeah, it's it. only going to use 10 watts of energy through that 60 watt or 100 watt limit socket. So you're totally fine. You can, like in your case, you could go up to, you could use a 100 watt equivalent LED in a 40 watt socket or a 25 watt socket for that matter, because it's not going to pull enough energy out to really ever damage the wiring of the socket. Okay. So you can go because it's on a dimmer. Yeah. So I want sometimes to go real bright, like if I'm cleaning my kitchen. Right. But sometimes I want it to be a little low. And, Do you have LED moody. bulbs? You know, I don't know. Yeah. They're not bright enough though. And and I whatever you do see, have is not bright enough. I sent my husband to the hardware oh, store to get the bulbs, right. which is the problem. You should go to our website. Yeah. yeah. We have good bulbs. So, anyways. Okay, well, I'm so glad. Wait, you know well, that. now we have to know Karen. Yeah, Karen. Because because I do yours? still yes. feel like that was personal. It's your turn. Really. Let's hear your dilemma. Okay. Why do I have this one particular lamp that has three LED bulbs in it, a floor lamp, and it has a built-in dimmer, mm-hmm. and sometimes when I dim it, not all, not all the time when I dim it, it buzzes. Why does it do that? It buzzes at the bulb? Uh-huh. Okay. Are the bulbs dimmable bulbs? Have well, you they dim. Yeah, they, some LEDs will dim, and they'll do that humming sound. I think anytime you hear a humming sound inside of a light bulb, it's not probably not a good thing that means there's something electrically happening in there and it's probably going to get it's going to overheat which you probably just need to check your bulbs because sometimes a a bulb an led that's not dimmable will dim but really yeah it just isn't properly dimming sometimes they blink and flash yes someone's raising their hand yes you me next my question was next you can finish yours um i have an old lamp antique per se Mm -hmm. can i use an led lamp in it without an LED it, without light, hurting light it at all. Yeah, yeah totally. as long as it fits in the it's socket. It's even better. Yeah, it's yeah. not going to heat it up. Right, I love LEDs for beautiful that reason. Antique. Yeah. So, Great. in addition to working at Ballard, I have a I I have another my own little lighting business, and it's a um, I do lamp repair. So I have people in here in Atlanta who do intake for me at a store, and I pick these things up on the weekend to do these repairs. It is shocking, no pun intended how many sockets are completely damaged by overheated. They're, 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 they used a socket that was too high. Like I had a, an enclosed Tiffany, Tiffany replica lamp where it, they had, it said seven watt only. They had put a 40 watt, a 40 watt incandescent uh, chandelier bulb inside this lamp. It had cooked the socket, cooked the wiring, everything was cooked. So if you're using incandescent bulbs, it's imperative that you follow the instructions and deal with the wattage limitations. Yeah, but now with LEDs, that's really a non-issue, and right. I love it because you can put a, a very bright bulb in a small enclosed compartment. I mean, some LEDs will tell you you can't orient them. 
you have to you can't orient them downward they have to be oriented upward you need to read the box and sometimes they can't be in an enclosed space because when we talked about earlier that an incandescent bulb is two percent efficient an incandescent gives two percent of light for 98 percent of heat a an led bulb is 20 percent efficient so it's 20 percent light with that 80 percent heat so there is some heat with an led it's typically in that base and again you more than likely don't want to put it in any completely enclosed space that doesn't allow the heat to dissipate so that's something mm. to think about okay i have a question about the way light bulbs look because some some led bulbs have that weird spirally thing some of They've them covered have, them up now, which is good. Yeah. Well, you're thinking about the, CFLs. The fake case oh, on them. That's a compact talking. fluorescent. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Oh. I'm sorry. No, okay, wait, what's I'm the difference? I'm just yakking Explain. on, please. No, go ahead. No. You're the bulb. You I know. have plenty That's of questions thing. for Valerie in a second. About I'll do oh, the good. Radio. Okay, this so is then your time to shine, I'll have my yeah. turn to be yeah. quiet. Yeah, finish up your light bulb talk. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, compact fluorescence, what you're talking about with the curly bulbs. Yeah, and the curly bulbs had mercury in them and traces of mercury. So if you broke it, you had to call. We shouldn't have them. Throw them away. I wouldn't. I don't have any of those in my house. Although I have them for photography, I have these 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 photography lights. What you guys have in my house, but they're they're in in my studio. But the um, they have those because they're super bright and white. But um, yeah, if you're using those in lamps, I would just not use them anymore. I'd just get rid of them. I Discontinue think use. Take them to Pronto. a recycling center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so LEDs, LED are safer as well. They're 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 more efficient too. They're they're using they're using ten percent of the mm-hmm. energy of a bulb. A one hundred watt bulb is using one hundred watts of energy. A one hundred watt equivalent LED is going to brightness is going to use about ten watts. Okay. And Steve and I changed our entire house out to LED in our old home before we moved. When you looked at the graph, you know, Georgia Power gives you the graph of how much power you used last December versus Ew. this December. Mm-hmm. It was crazy really? Really? how much less power we used in the house, how much huh. energy the LA, the uh, bulbs great. were taking up because I'm a lighting guy. So I love to layer in lots of lamps. And I like I turn on all my lamps at night because I like all rooms to be illuminated. I right. like to see my Karen, house. Karen, you do that too. I do. There are no dark rooms. I like to set the mood in the house. Nice. Yeah. The whole house, it's so right? Welcoming. Yeah. Even the guest room, the lights yeah, are on in there. Yeah, because if you yeah. look in there and it's not pretty, it's depressing. Oh, I'm, well, I'm the same way. I don't like to see a dark room. Well, it just makes pretty. me sad. Aww. Yeah. And I even have a, a go-to-bed <laughs> setting. <laughs> Really? Wait, what's your go to bed setting? Well, I turn off the lights in the in the main rooms, but in the rooms that face the street, yeah. I have a very dimly lit lighting program that I do. In there. I Are love any of you. these on timers? No, but awesome. I need to do that. She manually walks So wait, what if you're not in to... town? Then it's well, I if I leave town, I have also a different lighting setup that I do. Which <laughs> because I want it to look like I'm home, but not yes. obvious. Yeah. Like that it's so again, back to Home Alone, you put the guys in the front. I do. Dancing. I do. Front, I have uh-huh. on a train. Uh, Michael yes. Jordan. Yes. Yes. I knew it. I knew uh-huh. it. <laughs> I should do more of that. We're really bad about as soon as it's seven thirty, taking our kids upstairs. We shut down the whole first level, and our neighbors are. What always do you like, go hide in a corner? We go upstairs and we don't come back down, but we've like oh. shut down the bottom <laughs> level. Oh my goodness. Our, my neighbors are like, you guys are crazy. Like your whole house is like. Shut down. down. Yeah. So we can rob the bottom floor. Right. From so I'm like, oh, on. Yeah. maybe I should, maybe I should do that. So at least they don't think we're that Gone. sad. Yeah. I just. I mean, so we're not when elderly. In, like, we're upstairs doing things. Pretty. But yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like fun to drive in, in neighborhoods and look in people's windows. Yeah. I like. And I mean, I'm not. <laughs> I don't when that sounds terrible. Yeah. For that. But I looking in the it. windows, you want to see what's pretty. Don't say that again. I love to drive around looking in people's windows. People who leave their curtains open. My parents didn't do that. But like your home, I'm sure it's beautiful inside. But it's just nice to look in and see. There's art on the wall. You can see it illuminated. You can see their furniture. It's just really pretty. Yeah. My nose pressed against the glass. I know that's a little bit off-putting, but hey, I want to see what your stuff <laughs> looks like. I love it. I, I, I I've said many totally times, agree. I don't understand why people are so concerned with closing the drapery in the front of their house. You're not naked on your oh, yeah. living room sofa. I'm not no. worried about that. I'm just trying I mean, to conserve energy. Maybe we are. Oh, Caroline. And a hippie. Change to LEDs and you can yes. do it. You too okay. can enjoy the benefits of okay. having your curtains open yes. at night. Yeah. All right. Are we done with bulbs? I have, I have <laughs> some scale questions. Doozy. So that are just big. to reiterate oh. before we leave oh. this. See, we're not <laughs> done. We're, we're not, not yeah. done. Go ahead. No, I just want to make sure I want to go back to CBD when you're looking for bulbs because I know this is the thing. Oh. See we didn't repeat it. Color. Color. Brightness, brightness and is it dimmable so only I buy leds that are dimmable <laughs> don't buy non-dimmables and read that and make sure it's dimmable so but what if you don't have a dimmable lamp or something get a dimmer you're that would be my recommendation <laughs> if someone was going to decorate their house and they said what do i need to do to make it what would be the most optimal thing to do is it 
put a tabletop dimmer. You know, you can buy those tabletop dimmers. You just plug mm-hmm. your regular lamp into a little tabletop dimmer. Yeah. Get those. Put them on a dimmer. Magic. It's, it's awesome oh. because, like Karen said, you can change the mood in a room. Like if you have a cocktail party, you don't want blaring lights in your house. You want to dim your lights down nice and soft so there's conversation. If you have a fire in the fireplace, you want all that to set the mood. So I would put a dimmer on everything. And with that said, make sure your lights are dimmable, you know, and only buy 2700 Kelvin. That's my opinion, unless it's in a work area. Like I have a, a workshop and that I want it to be like daylight down there. So I, they're panel lights and they're, they're, they're 6,000 Kelvin, but it's like a skylight. And I love that because it's very stimulating. So those are the three mm. things, just in lumens or how bright it is, you know. Okay. So. okay. Oh, wait. I have one more question. Okay. So workable surfaces go as high as you can. Like for task lighting, you mean? Yeah. You I mean would, like in you a mean work as high room as far as color, a, or do you mean brightness? Um, say I'm painting. What do I want in that light lamp? Her watercolor. She's a watercolor. Yeah, so, so if like you're doing watercolor, surface. how do you want to see color? Because I do. I work on a bench as well. So I, I have two in there. I have I have. 5,000 Kelvin overhead, but I keep a 2700 Kelvin bulb in a, like a one of those Norris task lamps, so I can turn that on, so I That's can on look at I can look at my materials and what it would look like in someone's home and not a work light. So if you're trying to see uh, color a certain way, I like way, to paint in the dark. So oh wow! I'm really talented. And your stuff is amazing. I'm very talented. I know. Um, so I just wanted to confirm. So both. So both. Okay. Good. Tip. Yeah, you could have great. both depending on how you want to see the color. Yeah. Great. That's a great yeah. tip. Cool. It All is right. interesting how it puts you in a different mood. Oh, those for different, sure. Those different color. Yeah, the I white is very dimmers. stimulating. Yes. Yeah, you do. You need to turn your lights on at night, too. Maybe no. we should sell dimmers. Because the tabletop dimmers. Yeah. The, yeah. No, this like, podcast is the very best by one. It. Sponsored by you know dimmers. What I mean? Yeah, because for it's sure. hard. We for talk about them every time. A novice oh, like me to know when I'm out shopping, because 99% of the time I would probably go to Amazon, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, much as I hate Amazon, they're I taking know. over the world. Um, but that's probably where I would go, and it's hard to know which one's the good one, which one's yep. the best one. So go do that, Valerie. Okay, okay. I'm on it. <laughs> Curate okay. for us. I'm yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to talk scale of table lamps on okay. my tables, mm. entry tables, and in my living room. How do I not get a dinky lamp or pick the right height, width? What looks good? Mm, there you go. For a table lamp? I'm going table lamps. We'll start like, there. Yeah, Let's start there's there. lots yeah. of lamps, but, you Well, know. for a table, we generally do 27 to 30 inches. Height, width, height, depth. Height. With the shade, without the shade? That's with the shade. Okay. So it's with a shade. Mm-hmm. It's about 30 inches, so. So, and you want your shade to be about twice as wide as your base. So okay. if your base is an eight inch mm-hmm. then you want your shade to be 16 inch okay so 16 inch is usually what we use um, for table lamps when we're kidding them here at Ballard okay um, now shape so if I have a round base lamp would I put a rectangular shade on it yay nay is that gross mm. I think it's gross but personally <laughs> I mean it's a it's preference good. thing yeah. okay uh, if you have back. bad taste do that okay so what's <laughs> our drum really shade like still that. in Drum shade is our number one, and then we have Empire as number two, okay. and number three. What is, is that our though? Describe what Empire these are. is. Uh, so drum, our drums are say it's sixteen inches on the top and sixteen inches on the bottom. Okay. So they're Cylinder. the same. They're straight. Mm-hmm. Um, round top and bottom. Empire has a um, it kind of flares out, so it has the smaller mm-hmm. diameter on the top and bigger at the bottom. And then we like have a straight line, or does it like boop. ours is a straight line? Okay. We have another one that's a bell, a bell that, okay. that um, definitely swoops out. Looks like a bell, um, right? But our um, our third best is called our tapered. Um, mm. It's like a tapered drum yeah. silhouette. So it's kind mm. of like if the drum in the Empire had a baby, but mm-hmm. it looks more like the drum. Yeah. Um, so it's very <laughs> gradual, angled, slight yeah. angle to yeah. it. So really, those are our top three right now. It would be I'll, transitional, right? I mean, yeah. you got traditional and then... Yeah. Empire what, what, is more modern. traditional. Okay. Drum, for us, is really more modern. Um, and then mm-hmm. I've been seeing conical a lot lately in yeah. some of the magazines. And I really what like... Describe, conical, yeah, like describe that to us. So, no, yeah, it's so it's... It's oh, like a very hat. exaggerated. It's like a Like a, tr- a triangle. Yeah. Yes. So it's like a little triangle... And I really like to see it on some of these, like, 
cement, really vintage, like big artisan made old, you know, piece with this very slim modern t- type mm-hmm. shade. Yeah. And so like yeah, uh, the two pieces together, I think look really fresh right now. Okay. When do I use a shade that has a pattern or when do I use a solid Ooh, color? Yeah. When do I just stick with white? white? I'd say white is when you want to get the most light filtering through. Okay. So the fabric usually, I mean, it, the light kind of comes through and filters pretty evenly on a white shade. Whereas if you have a pattern, I love the look of that, but you're not going to get, it's not going to be a reading light as right. much, right? Mm-hmm. So it's going to be more for aesthetics. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you have mm-hmm. metal, it's not going to let any um, of the light <clears throat> come out on the sides. It's only going to go on the top and the bottom. And you could have like even like a laser cut in the metal, so then it has really mm-hmm. great shadows on the mm-hmm. walls or the right. ceiling. So you kind of have to take all of those things. Something that we have right now that's been really popular is our um, woven shades. So mm-hmm. we have some um, rattan shades that we were really is that successful. How you say it? It's not rattan. 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 Oh, rattan. I, I say rattan. <laughs> rattan. Rattan. But I, don't okay. I simply love your rattan shades. Yes, it's fabulous. <laughs> there you so we okay. had them in chandelier shades last year, and so this year we brought them in lamp shades, and um, really just the the weave filters the light, and it makes it look very textural, um, and it's you're not going to see it like a white fabric shade you're not going to get as much light out and i imagine too if something is um pleated yeah that would even be less light too because there's correct. just layers there's of two fabric layer. mm-hmm. are pleated shades back in uh die I right now they're two. amazing <laughs> amazing <laughs> pleated printed i'm ready what Bring about it the all. crinkled um plastic ones from the 80s um oh, wow. not so much not, no so before, let's are we think, supposed let's to think take about the that. plastic <laughs> off the shades that is a great <laughs> question and one that i can answer i'm very technical and i'm gonna say yes okay. please oh. take mm. that plastic off <laughs> okay. um but really i mean we've seen a huge resurgence in the pleated and the patterned um shades and I'm really excited that we have a unique assortment at Ballard that most of our competitors have not come close to and um, that it's really hard to find in the marketplace unless you're going with a very specific designer and right. they're getting Custom. something that's only available to the trade. Mm-hmm. Um, but we can um, offer that to our customers. Yeah. And so it's I, I'm really excited about that in the next year yeah. and what kind of um, patterns. So we work. So with my team, I work with a designer. So um, my designer's name is Zoe, and she does a lot of beautiful artwork that we're having um, digitally printed into fabric and paper shades in this next year. So we're really excited. Oh, but our Renee yeah. looks great, which Taryn, you drew, right? Uh, the, the little block print. Yes. You, you yes. drew the Anae. Yes. Um, so the pleated Anae Empire shade looks insane mm-hmm. on that, Margot. Yeah. Yeah. What about that. paper? I don't know that we sell any paper ones, but what about paper shades? So How much we, brightness do they give off? And um, I mean, I think it's about, it's probably slightly less than... Um, Probably depends on the color. Fabric, right. So, but the ones that we're doing are mostly white backed. And I guess it depends on how thick your paper is. And then if there's a backing, like a styrene plastic backing on it or not. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, there's a bunch of factors that would go into it. But we are um, going to start um, selling paper shades this year at Ballard. I just think, oh, you go. No, I want to get back to the question of size when we're done. Oh, okay. Of, of just, the table lamps? Mm-hmm. I do too. I just think it's okay. interesting to think about. I think most people, when they um, pick a lampshade, they are purely thinking of aesthetics. But I do think that the it's important to remember just what you were saying about the material and how that is going to determine how much it's getting out, you know, yeah, how much light is getting sure. out. Sure. Yeah, like if you use metal, I love that look, and I always like it when it's gold on the inside. Mm-hmm. But you're really, yeah, you're only going to have light below it and above it. And so if you're trying to, like, light your whole room, yeah, it's so not like, going to. Or read yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, gonna... well, I do want to say something along those lines, too. Um, black shades is another thing, and, and um, we've had this discussion. When, when I purchase a black shade, I like – when I turn that light on at night, I don't want to see the light bulb at all. I expect the black shade to be black. Total all the time. blackout. So, you know, there are shades that are fabric black, but they have a white backing. So when you turn them on at night, you're gonna get you're gonna get some light bleed through that and you're mm-hmm. gonna see the weave of the fabric. That's not something I really care for. 
So that's another thing to consider with your black shades if you want it to be a complete blackout. And another part you just mentioned is paper shades. I have three lamps in the house that have a, it's a card stock. I call them chalk lamp, chalk shades, because it's almost like a, it feels like a chalkboard, but it's, it's, oh. it's a cardboard, if you will, not corrugated, but a cardboard. But what I love about it is that it throws the light up to the ceiling, which is reflective, and it actually throws all the light down. So because I make lamps, the, there's pieces I use underneath there that I want to illuminate, like old ceramic or whatever. So it just completely illuminates, um, what's that blue and white stuff called? I always mess up. Chinoiserie. 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 Oh. That, it illuminates it so beautifully because you don't have any glare in your face. You're just seeing light down onto the object or the table surface and light going up to the ceiling, which is reflective, which again goes back to being wonderfully nice when you get to my age. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> my ripe old age. <laughs> Okay, so circling back to actual lamps, table lamps. Okay. All right, so I know now the general height, but when do I use buffet lamps? Because those are usually like tall, skinny things, and when do I use them? That's also kind of a personal preference. Yeah. I mean, so in my opinion, I mean, it depends on the space that you have. So if you only have a very narrow Thin. space on mm -hmm. your table, you're going to want to go more buffet. If you're not trying to use a big shade that's going to hide a piece of artwork that's back there, sitting on top of your buffet, you know, it kind of, there's all these variables, right? I mean, a lot of people used to use just buffet so they could put like, all the food around it and the shade wouldn't be, you know, too Oh, is that why they were yeah, named buffet? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. so, I mean, it was to be able to use that space. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times now, it's really for decoration, so... It really is up to your personal preference. I think it's just fine to use a regular table lamp on your buffet. It all comes right. down to the space you have. I mean, if you have a very narrow, like in my dining room right now, I have a piece of art and then I have um, drapery that comes down. I have a pretty narrow space and I don't want to block the art right, um, that, that I just put yeah. in there. Right. So I really am probably going to use a buffet, even if, or just a sh table lamp that's just a thinner like mm -hmm. little so you think you're going to go tall face. in that space because you've got artwork and you've got wall and then you got drape um drapery or curtain panels i got schooled on curtains and drapery mm -hmm. in this podcast thank That's you very right. much thank you, but so <laughs> there are curtain panels and so i've seen that picture so you're going to put tall and thin or skinny lamps they're I not think short ones so because okay. my main focus of the room is the art and i don't want to block it by big shades mm -hmm. yeah, so that makes sense. i think i'm going to go thinner and more petite with a so that'll make a smaller shade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't think there's a rule that you have to because people used to use their buffets, and maybe they still do, is put the food out in there so you didn't actually go in the dirty kitchen. Your food was out in beautiful bowls on the buffet, so the lamps sure. are tall above the food. But I don't think that's necessarily a rule because you may like the little lamp, which you guys call the tater tot, which I don't know we if tater tot's out tatum. yet. But yeah, just a little lamp. But I think you could block with books or something like that and put small lamps on your buffet, you know, just cute, smaller, little, little fat lamps. I think tear in proportion step. too. You know, mm -hmm. as you're right. like you were saying, if you have a tiny little table, you know, a, mm -hmm. I, I personally wouldn't put like a tall skinny lamp on a tall skinny table. Yeah, that's I feel like it odd. would look, it would feel wobbly. Yep. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe something mm -hmm. like you're saying, a little shorter lamp. Right. On something that's tall and skinny, or like my buffet, I have a very large lamp there. Mm -hmm. Um, just because there's nothing there and I wanted a little bit more drama, but it's height clear glass. Yeah. yeah, and it adds So it height. doesn't take up visual space, mm -hmm. so it's fine. Yeah, yeah, so it's, I think it just, like everything with Karen, decorating, it's yeah. got Didn't you mention in one of the podcasts about putting lamps on uh, stands or something like that, on pedestals? On Tom Shear's episode, yes. He yeah. put yes. a lamp oh, on just so a good. pedestal. I just thought that was brilliant. So I'm looking it at the pedestals so good. in my house. I think going, he glued them down. <laughs> it made me nervous. Work of art. Didn't they say they were really... Precious. Fancy. Yeah. Karen was oh. like, oh, it was just like a, you know, kind of just like a, like a pottery a, bag. No, whatever, white. It was just a target <laughs> lamp. And Beep. he was like, uh, those were extremely <laughs> fancy lamps. Mm. We're like, okay, okay. never mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is That's funny. But I do think thinking outside the box about where you put lamps, people should do more of. Like on top of bookcases, like little accent lamps. Yes, there, love that. On, you know, that you either use your remote for or they're on a timer. Mm -hmm. um, on, in your kitchen, on the counter, under the cabinets, mm -hmm. things like mm -hmm. that. Little spots where you would, maybe right. in your powder room, if there's a little a little table in there with your candle, has a mm -hmm. little lamp that's always dimly lit for your guests. And I have a little little lamps in my house in several places that are never turned off. They're always on. Even if I'm not upstairs at all, there's still little lamps up there. I know that that little dark spot is illuminated. There's something about it. I'm very kind of psychological. Crazy. Yeah. I'm crazy about lighting. Thank you very oh, much. No. <laughs> he was meant to be on this podcast. I yes. think so. Yes. 
But we're definitely Destiny. expanding into more of those little petite guys that yeah. can go on a bookshelf in a little corner. Little so we have down. several coming out in this next year that um, I think are really fun. And some have a candelabra bulb base yes. in, and some have a medium, like regular bulb base. Um, so it can change how small you want your little shade to be. It gives it a totally different look. Yeah. The other thing about lights, too, that I don't think we do very often or often enough is we talk about like pulling all your art down and kind of taking it around your house and rearranging, then everything feels fresh. Do the same with your lamps. Pull them mm. all into one room. That's interesting, yeah. That's a good and then, idea. Well, you couldn't because you have 900. Yes. But yes. the rest of us who only true. have 12. But I could still yeah. move my 900 lamps around. You wow, could. that looks so good. That's a great idea, though, to <laughs> well, refresh. I yeah, agree. With what you've got. Right. And we've talked about this before, but um, buying them in pairs, even if where you're initially using them is not necessarily it's necessary, mm -hmm. but having a pair is so much more impactful and so you know you can always like split them up but then if you do want to rearrange them right. and you have a console Later table it makes it, together. it mm -hmm. makes it so much more dramatic unless you're a hoarder in which case we don't recommend what do you mean my mother doesn't need any more lamps she's got lamps in her basement but for she days. doesn't listen to oh, podcasts she so, she's okay. so we're fine <laughs> i bet she's got great lamps in her basement too oh mm. <laughs> i'm kidding she called herself a lamp whore there for a while really whore? yes <clears throat> or hoarder excuse me Okay, just make sure. She loved a good Durr, lamp. She, she loved just clarifying, <laughs> just making sure. You want to hear She was a hoarder. Was yeah. what your mom's gonna Well, certain this, people right? have certain things that they. She loves lamps. You know, like I love, I love her. Yeah, she loves. I can meet her. I well, lamps have yeah. such variety. You know, we think about mm -hmm. oh, it's a ceramic lamp, mm -hmm. but I was on a vintage site this weekend, just looking what they have, and you know, seventies lamps. Mm -hmm. They really had some guts and glory back then, yes. right? Yeah, and it, it's such a statement. I think embracing a statement mm -hmm. in a lamp right. is don't overlook that power that that can. Well, sometimes can that is the best. Art. Yeah, they can be, mm -hmm. and I love that about a lamp yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah. my mom just moved um, into a new house, and so she has really like narrowed down everything that she's bringing into this new house. And she has this one lamp that she got for a wedding present, and it's like a ceramic like '70s. It has this like painting on it of this like flower you know it looks like an old like whiskey jug almost like it's like this but it actually I mean we, we put a new shade on it and it really now kind of like when you mix it with the right things it looks really cool and like yeah. selected yeah. Mm -hmm. right so I think you're right like they're they're coming back That's it's all the happening one thing Miles said you can't not recycle is lampshades he's like they're bad do yeah. not keep an old lampshade you know no. so if you yeah. get a vintage lamp the shade more than likely is going to make that lamp look not yes. good right you need to refresh update it. the shade yes yeah. mm -hmm. so fringe on a lampshade or not no mm. fringe i'm gonna go no <laughs> no i'm I sure it, I just I think it, can, it can be very boho fringe. for yeah. some people but yeah. um i like yeah. it clean i'm yeah. sure yeah. someone out there does it well but oh i'm sure as a general yeah. rule yeah, yeah sure there's probably something beautiful yeah mm -hmm. i have a question if i may about cost mm. so lamps can be so expensive you know a thousand dollars and then mm -hmm. i can find them for nineteen dollars mm -hmm. Why? What is what's inside of there, or what is determining the price point of lamps? Is there something inside of ours that's better than some or worse than some? You know what I mean? Right. I mean, so for ours, ours have brass sockets, which is a really great, um, you know, sturdy right. uh, product. Some people have plastic. Well, it's, um, it's called phenolic. Fittings. Yeah, it's a phenol. Yeah, that black looks like it looks like plastic, and those are always on less expensive lamps right so a uh -huh. lot of the things you might get at home goods and you're like great two lamps are fifty dollars this is amazing right um i mean it really is about the quality of the lamp i mean i think once you get above three hundred dollars for a lamp a lot of times it's you're getting charged for the aesthetic of it um but when you're really looking at the parts i mean you want to make sure that you have good quality materials you know and then a lot of times the way that the cord um, comes out of the lamp, mm -hmm. I'll see um, that it just comes straight out of the socket. And a lot of times when you're looking online, you don't, they air, you know, they, yeah, they color yeah, correct the cord mm -hmm. out. So you're like, oh, this is beautiful. And you're not even thinking about the function and that you have to plug it into something. So then you get it home and you're like, wait, this bi big black cord's coming right out of the socket. So it's something that we definitely try to look at here. If we can, we're willing to spend a little bit more to make sure the product looks really clean and finished when we get it. To yeah, customer. and and you look at the quality. And and for me, looking at a lamp, considering a lamp for purchase, that how that socket looks, even though it can be under a shade, typically, 
I want a solid brass socket. I don't want some junky socket. I want it to have a um, the key, the on-off key mm -hmm. on there, the, t the thing you turn. I want that to be also brass and feel really heavy. Mm -hmm. And with our lighting, even the harp and the saddle, the saddle where the harp connects at the socket, that is high quality and it doesn't flop. You know, sometimes you put a harp into some saddles and it, it moves around and the shade shakes when you touch the socket. It doesn't happen with, with the lighting that we sell or with, you're paying for that. You know, you're paying for the, mm -hmm. the, the quality of the, the materials. Well, I think we should talk about harps before we... Well, we... I think I don't that'll mean be before you talk. I mean, before we end the episode. Right. <laughs> Well, I have a question yeah. sort of about that. Well, it's similar. But I was curious when you are picking out a shade, and this is related to the harp, um, sometimes I'll see photos or, like, be at someone's house, and you can see, like, the bottom of the, what, it's saddle? The saddle. Oh, the saddle, it? That's yeah. a Or the me. neck. Yeah, so absolutely. talk about how, where the bottom of your shade should hit on your light. You know, because you, if you don't have the wrong yeah. size harp. We do a lot of that. Right? Yes. Of so, yes, you can <laughs> adjust that. Um, and some of that's personal preference, but they're really the guide that we use here. So my assistant, Jamie, and I do the fitting um, of the lamps um, and the shades. And that's something that we're constantly in the warehouse. We're bending like halfway. So we'll stand up. We'll bend kind of over at our waist. Look like just above like a table you know like basically where you'd be sitting if there was a lamp on a table beside you and we want to question why don't you get a chair and just sit in it just curious well then my <laughs> legs would not be in such great shape no but they, it's for the glutes karen it's for the exactly. glutes exactly work so, go but for the burn it's a thing we always stand up we bend at the waist we look down and we want just a tiny bit of the neck to be showing but not enough so you see the saddle and all those inner workings of your shade. Yeah. Okay. So um, we like we don't want it to look like it's eating the base. So we don't want the the harp to be too short where the shade is like coming down and you're not seeing any neck. Okay. We like to just see like a tiny bit of neck. Okay, you're holding up your but fingers. No. Are we saying like a centimeter, so two centimeters? Of like an inch of a neck. It's a mock neck. There you there go, we girl. Go. Wow. I like just to see no. like a little like neck. an inch Somebody's and a half, up. an inch inch and a half of the neck. <laughs> No saddle, and but I want to see a neck. So I don't want it to eat the base, okay. and I don't want it to be too high. Right. So we okay. can use – all lamps come with so, a harp, right. but I don't have to keep that harp. I can get any size yes. harp if my shade – like if I want a shade and it needs to be a little lower right. down to the lamp mm -hmm. or higher up, I can just get a different size harp. So, yeah, yeah and we can really change – so it, a drum might only be 11 inches – tall whereas the empire right. might be 10 mm -hmm. inches tall so that's going to change the, the way harp. so yeah. if if you're looking at a base and you can't decide which shade first you need to get the shade and put it on with the harp to see where it falls so when we kit it and online you're picking out your base your full lamp so it has your base and your shade on it rest assured that we've already gone through the process to make sure it hits at the right place mm -hmm. yes. if not and you don't like the drum shade or whatever we've paired it with Feel free to choose from our selection of a million other f shades, but know that you might have to spend another $5 and grab another harp to make mm -hmm. it appropriate for that base. Yeah, yeah. In selecting a harp, you know, I have a lighting studio, so I have I, I have an array of harps in my house, so I just take it downstairs and set it on the bench, you know, and fit my lamps. But if you're a regular person who doesn't have that, I would recommend you take your lamp base to a lamp shade, where you're going to buy your lamp shade. And, you know, typically lamp stores, lighting stores would have that. That way you have your lamp base there. You can fit for the proper harp and fit the shades on it and see what you like. What because if it's the internet? It, the <laughs> internet is going to require some measuring, so yeah, I would consider the height of the shade. And so you can send it right back. Say the height of the shade <laughs> you and mean then the, harp? the harp based on that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Harps are inexpensive. On yeah, they're inexpensive. Yeah. 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 And also I know in our stores they give you a harp. If you need I a hold my size lamps harp, in give it to, you. to Ballard. My old one. Yeah, like, we have a lot of customers and, like, that do that. Yeah, and brought it in, and we have are all there are all the shades in there, mm -hmm. and I like had one Try of my on. assistants help me, and they totally yeah. yeah yeah. I mean, they say that we have a lot of people that come into the stores, and just so they can play with all the shades. So we try to have the different silhouettes mm -hmm. there, so they can play mm -hmm. with the harps and the shades to see what they need. And even if we don't have it in store, then we can just get it from the site. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I so think the biggest mistake you can make with a shade is having it sitting either, it's I call it, you call it eating, I call it swallowing. Swallowing the base of your lamp or it's too high. Too high is the worst. Yeah, high oh. waters. Well, yeah, yeah, high waters. Although high waters are in, you know, to wear, show your yes. socks. But, um, no not, socks. We don't want to see your saddle. Mm -mm. Your saddle's showing. We do not want to see your saddle. So the saddle <laughs> is the thing sure. that attaches the harp 
right. to the lamp. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, it kind of looks like an upside down horse. It is saddle. like a little saddle. It's like a yeah. little yeah. U shape. It's, yeah. okay. it's this little guy. Yeah. Yeah. This? It's what your just heart like her sits fingers. Are yeah, doing. It's just snapshot. like that. Yeah, this is this is audio, Valerie. Right. Okay, my bad. I forget sometimes. <laughs> no, we have video Let me going draw here you too. A picture yeah. with my arm. Yes. <laughs> but I had to learn all those things when I came to Ballard too. I mean, mm-hmm. I had to learn the anatomy of a table lamp and what are all the pieces and learn yeah. the difference between, you know, an Uno fit shade versus a spider whoa, versus whoa, a whoa. clip-on. Uh-oh, whoa. You, you lost him at Uno. Uno. <laughs> Uno, we're going to play Uno now. Well, you yeah. have to so Uno. Explain, that is. Okay, yes. so regular, the majority of shades are a spider uh-huh. that, with a heart. So it's right. like they have four. So it has that tiny little washer circle. circle that has mm-hmm. the four little pieces that go out. Like spokes, kind yes, of. Yes, kind of like that. Four, yeah, four spokes. So, and, th- and that goes on your harp, and you can use it with a finial. Yes. So that's the majority. Yes. So that's your spider. The um, next one is Uno Fit. So that has a bigger circle washer that goes around the socket okay. base. Oh, yeah, under your bowl. Uh huh. And then that's it has right. the wires that go up. Mm-hmm. So that one goes down. And then the other one is really a clip on. So we have a lot of um, mm-hmm. chandelier shades and buffet shades that are clip ons. Clip on So they yeah. have just. Little clips that go right around your bulb to secure and, it. You, know, you don't use a finial with Paying them. attention to the, when you're buying a clip-on that you're not, you know, you can't put typically put a, a candelabra or a type B bullet shape bulb clip onto a, a medium-based standard bulb. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Or well, it's round. Exactly. Yeah. So just being aware when you're selecting a bulb clip that you're getting mm-hmm. one that fits on the pro, fits your bulb, the bulb that you're going to be using. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know how strong you are, but you could never cram a candelabra shade with um, the clips onto a medium base. Onto a standard it. light like, bulb, yeah, type A. And it yeah. just fly off. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. This is semi-unrelated. Did you guys have anything else you want to ask about there? No. Okay. I think we're good. My husband claims, and I don't know if it's true because I hardly ever trust him when he talks. Um, <laughs> he doesn't that, listen, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah, he won't. I care. love you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I do love him. He's very smart. Aww. But he claims that there's those little oh, tiny, oh. like, uh, they're not like, they are actually... LED bulbs that you put into maybe your like under cabinet lighting or oh, things this, like yes. that. Mm-hmm. The super tiny ones. Pin bulbs. That you can't touch them with your skin. Halogen. The the halogen bulbs you're supposed to use a piece of tissue because the oil from your skin can cause because it gets so super hot oh. that. It but can LED the bulb. is not the same. Uh, no, I I've, I've never heard of that with LEDs. Okay. You know, but I, I probably just out of habit if I'm working with pin bulbs, which I do, I have in my outdoor lighting. I changed all the outdoor lighting as well. You know, the lighting, path lighting and things mm-hmm. like that, all to LED pin lights. You just pop them in. And you know, you have a 300 watt transformer and you, I had 300 watts worth of incandescent bulbs on it before. Now I only have like 15 watts of energy being pulled so I can add more lights or I'm using that much less energy. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's you're all tell things Joe to think he's about. a liar. It's like, um, you're informed. like, what's his name? Griswold. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. Clark. Or you're going to take but out the But tastefully whole... done, I must say. <laughs> so do you have LED lights tasteful. now for your tree? <laughs> What's that? Your holiday tree has LED lights now? <laughs> one of them did. Yeah, the other one we could not find the color that we wanted in LED. But I recommend that as well. Mine has that's LED. that's a big difference. Yeah, well. My Christmas tree. Caroline's did too, but it was too bright. She had to get a dimmer. Burn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a whole song. Oh, for your fun. Christmas tree? It's a whole song. It was last we year's okay. podcast. We're you can catch that. up later. Oh, yeah. Well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, I do have a question about finishes of lighting because okay. something we get questioned a lot around is open floor plans and like selecting essentially more ceiling fixtures, I think, is where people get stuck. Yeah. How do you coordinate? Does the style have to match? Oh, if you have more than one yes. in an open area. Yeah. If you've got, say, okay. you've got kitchen pendants and then you've got a chandelier and then you've got a, you know, so, yeah. Valerie's favorite subject. Give us. I love this. Okay. I liked the keyword that you used was coordinate. We like coordinating. We do not like matching. <laughs> so we have um, a very, we have a um, really successful chandelier in our assortment called the Bamboo Chandelier. Mm-hmm. It's um, got this really nice champagne finish. It's very, um, it looks beautiful in every space. Um, the problem that I could see is someone saying, I love the bamboo so much and over my dining room that I want to put the bamboo right beside it over my island and the pendants that we have. And that's just like matchy-matchy. 
So mm-hmm. we don't want to do that, in my opinion. Um, I think it should coordinate but not be matchy. So with that kind of thing, I think you play off, if you have the bamboo over your dining room, right beside it for pendants, you could use something like our Piedmont Lantern um chandelier uh yeah. pendants it's like a so the inside kind, so it has different colors on the outside so you, let's just say you go with the white piedmont the inside has it picks up kind of that rash brass. champagne feel right. so they kind of coordinate mm-hmm. whereas mm-hmm. they're so there's not a matching. thread that's holding right them together. so find something in common so something else so maybe like if you love the hadley which is an open lantern it's an oil rub bronze it really looks like hand hammered so if you want to put those pendants over your island you also maybe want to match that same feeling of the finish. So maybe you try our Luce um, chandelier, which has six arms, but it has kind of that same feel, more of like a rustic. Mm -hmm. You could use shades on it to make it look different or more personalized to that space. But you want something that coordinates. You do not want something that matches. In that realm as well, I think it's great to mix metals. I know, I think in the past we thought, okay, Everything has to be oil rub bronze yeah. in this house. I mean, My down house. to the doorknobs, down yeah. to the faucets, faucets mm-hmm. yeah. down to the poles, every, you know, uh, fixture. Whereas yeah. now, I think it's much more acceptable and even encouraged to really mix that up. So it's okay to have brass in with bronze, and then your poles can be nickel. I mean, you really don't want to have a cornucopia <laughs> everything in there but I mean if you have it like two different in a room I think it's totally acceptable it looks like you collected it over time and you didn't go to one store and buy all their brass fixtures that match exactly when you say colors that are similar like I'm hearing oil rub bronze and brass I'm I'm feeling yellow to brown would you put satin nickel with with oil rub bronze or with brass I mean you I, I think you could I would go more pewter if okay. I was doing it, but I mean, I think you can kind of mix things. I mean, I've seen some great like um, drapery hardware in oil rub bronze, and then a nice light fixture in brass in the same room, mm-hmm. and I think yeah. it works. There's so many metals too. I mean, think if you have a bathroom, you've got a shower faucet, the handle mm-hmm. in your toilet, your cabinet hardware, right. your light. I mean, so expecting to have all of this match seems impossible and mm-hmm. you would just drive yourself crazy trying to get your sconce and your and it can be really know, expensive to change all that <clears> out <throat> so yeah, i mean time. i think you yeah. want to go for more of a timeless look mm-hmm. i mean for me in the bathroom that's usually chrome it just yeah, looks clean it looks classic that's where i head that doesn't mean i mean maybe that's for my faucets and my poles but that doesn't mean i wouldn't put a brass fi- like light fixture into yeah. the bathroom right i have to say i like in my um In my bedroom, I really loved these sconces that are, it has sort of a black and brass combination arm. Ooh, I love that. But for the ceiling fixture, I had painted my ceiling sort of a silver gray, and it was really glossy. But I didn't want anything dark um, because I didn't want to really draw attention to it. Like, I didn't want it to be the focal point. And I didn't want any brass because I thought that would look strange. So I did a silver. So my ceiling fixture is silver flush mount but then my sconces are black and bronze mm-hmm. or i'm sorry black and brass and i think you just it works because it's it fine. kind of but you wanted it mm-hmm. to kind of fade off and exactly. that's what you accomplished and i love a two tone i mean i think yeah. like the matte black and the antique brass right now is insane i think it looks so cool and yeah, so modern right too. now yeah. yeah um and really fresh <clears throat> yeah. i've seen a lot of pieces like that that look great. I almost feel like people overthink it a little too much. Sure. You know? Right. I think well, people I are think afraid to commit. I feel like if it matches, then it, it wor- right. it'll work right. Right. And you don't have to be afraid. Yeah. <clears throat> it exactly. doesn't have to match. Right. Yeah. Why do s- chandeliers and sconces come with that stupid sticker on them that I can't get off? Well, that's because they're certified. UL. Yes. yes. They're UL certified. So yeah. <laughs> they're just letting the customer know that they should have like a vote of confidence that like, hey, this has been Yeah, but how protected. do I get it off? Well, so here's yeah, what we ahead. do. For our, she doesn't want to know what it means. She just wants to yeah. know how to get it off. Okay. Gugon helps. But what we do is when we ship chandeliers, since we have to have that notice on at least one of the candelabras um, on one of the sleeves, we ship an extra sleeve in the box that has that sticker on it. And then all the ones that you actually need for your chandelier do not have it. Thank you. So it makes it really easy for our customer to be like, 
check. I know that this is certified. I can use it for any place I need to, but I don't have to break out my Goo Gone and sit yeah. there for hours. Well, typically in, in, in all of our lighting, it's not typically it is the way it is. The The actual UL listed sticker is on the canopy of the hanging fixture or it's on the back plate of a sconce. So that's where that is. That sticker we're talking about is UL. Mm -hmm. It has to be on there by UL standards as well, but it is telling you about the socket, socket rating. You only use mm -hmm. a 40 watt bulb in that. Yeah. You know, in that socket. Yeah, never burning. read it. But if we go back to LEDs, <laughs> it's really a non-issue because they're, you know, like if you're going to, it said 100 watt max bulb, that's an incandescent. They don't even make a 100 right. watt LED that you can buy in your house. It'd be so bright, it would burn your eyes. So, mm -hmm. you know, with that said, you you can you use the extra the extra sleeve or you can clean off the sticker with some goo gone. It'll, it'll come off. And but I know a long time ago off. you want them off the lights in the retail stores. I do. Because you can't stand them. But by law, we'd have to have them there so the customer can see that, you know, and they know they can't put the noonday sun. But I go to people's houses scars. and they have not removed them. <clears throat> yeah, I I, don't people don't notice stuff like that. Certain people it? don't. Yeah. I have some on it some sconces and I can't get them off. <gasps> and I will admit they're not from Ballard. Okay. Yeah. So you've taken the Let's sleeve off and together, tried to remove we can, it. We can get this done. Well, it's a it's a painted gold finish Ooh. and it's. Oh, you're afraid you'll ruin the finish I underneath know. too. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm gonna have to just try to DIY paint it. Yeah. Take it off and then re yeah. patch paint it. Yeah, yeah I, I think. think that'd be your best bet. Yeah. Because yeah. don't try to do it over the top. The other thing that I think people don't do is cut the dumb tag off of their lamp cords. That uh, thing, yes, that white cut tag. Cut it off, yes, people. I know. Don't yeah. keep Is that it. like you the mattress tag, too? Yes. Like, you're right. allowed to take that off. Right. I mean, my mom was like, don't rip that off the other day. I'm like, you've had this for 15 years. I know, the you tag is all torn, tag off. and She's it's like, ragged. It says by law yes. that you cannot take this tag off. I'm like, this is until you buy it. You purchase right. this. No one's going to come tag. after you. Like, there's not a mattress tag, please. Yeah. There's not the same thing for a table lamp there might cord, be. please. Right. Yeah, cut those off, people. Yeah. Yeah. Never, Remove those. Never noticed. Yeah. You've never, never noticed? noticed? Well, they're usually down behind off? the sofa or something like that. Yeah, so I don't know, know guys. Behind the sofa. Well, it's on holiday lights, too. Yes. So when you, like, I put a, you know, yeah. big garland around the front door, and there's, like, 85 tags on yeah, it. Yeah, you have to and cut all those off. I sat out there with these tiny, like, my um, eyebrow scissors <laughs> and cutting it forever because I didn't want to be that girl. No mm -hmm. attention for detail. I just don't get it. You know, <laughs> where's the attention for detail? Mm -hmm. I wanted to go back quickly before we move past what she said because something um, that I wrote down because it piqued my, um, some of my thoughts. She had mentioned a dining room light and a kitchen island. That's pretty common, I think, now right. with open concept. A lot of people have that. And I love the idea of not matching. I just mm -hmm. think that's a great thing to do. But on a kitchen island, the thing to consider is when I'm in the work surface in my house, I have down lights on there. And I, have, I do have can lights in the kitchen that shine directly down, directionally down onto the surface of the counter. So if when you're choosing those pendants, which are jewelry, if they don't have downlighting, you have to think about the task. So if that's where you chop vegetables, that's where you put together your favorite cake, you want to be able to see what you're doing. So consider that when you choose your pendants that hang there. If I were building a home or if I were remodeling a house, I would make certain that I had like three can lights, you know, over that in addition to the two junction boxes where I could hang my jewelry. Yes. So I got my pretty little earrings hanging, and then I've got three heavy-duty cans on a separate switch. I can turn those on so I can work. But if I'm having a cocktail party and I'm laying out some munchy foods out there for people, I can dim down my, my earrings, you know, because that's <laughs> what they are to it, me. If you can... They're jewelry. Yeah, right. and you yeah. want them yeah. to be sparkly and pretty and inviting, you know, because they're gorgeous. I mean, that's you spend a lot of money on those things. Yeah. Right. And I think that's where you should put your money is in the jewelry. I love the... I love that final phase of decorating a house, sure. you know, mm -hmm. it's choosing the lighting. So it's just, it, it's animated when you turn it on. It's, it's not just a, a, a thing sitting here like a glass. When you turn on the lights, there's animation to that. It's, it's something emotionally it affects you. Yeah, right. it's a personalized yeah. statement yeah. that you're putting in your room. Mm -hmm. yeah. Should we or should we not put shades on chandeliers? And are there any rules around that? I got to tell you this, though. Just this morning, just this morning, I was leaving the house, and she knows the story. I put a Christmas chandelier. I, I make a Christmas chandelier every year he out of something. Theme. First and of all, he has a Christmas theme. There's a theme for the house. So last year's theme was Aurora Borealis. Yes. It was all multiple colors. So <laughs> I took an old crystal, like one of our Claire chandeliers, and I removed all the crystals, opened them up, and I... I glued on with a super adhesive all these vintage shiny bright ornaments in all those spots. So the entire thing is multicolor, multi-armed, 
Claire in a champagne let's finish. To the professionals. Mm-hmm. Champagne, <laughs> a champagne tree. Well, there's a lot of okay. DIY people. It wasn't electrical. Sh- okay. It wasn't electrical. So that went up. But this year's theme was red, gold, and green with deer antlers. So we took the Phalian chandelier that Ballard makes and it's silver, and we painted it gold. I rubbed it down with black wax because I said to the, her in a meeting, I said, gold spray paint, and her eyes got so gigantic. Got she nervous. was like, she was terrified. She's like, you gold spray painted my Phalian. How dare paint. you? But he yeah. layered it mm-hmm. and waxed it. But I and waxed it, it and it put some gold wax on it. It just looks like metal. It is so beautiful. And then we put some greenery on it. Well, it's up still in the foyer. I haven't taken it down, but it had shades on it. And just this morning, I'm standing there in my jammies <laughs> when I should be getting ready to go to work. And I'm pulling the shades off of the lamp because it had shades on it. And I just, it was just this funny thing. I thought, if Steve sees me doing this, he's going to be so upset because I'm doing something like that in the morning. But my deal is sometimes you don't want shades on a chandelier you know it's really about mm-hmm. glare to me it is is that yeah. why we get shades on a chandelier i put shades glare? on it at christmas because what i wanted to do was send the light again send the light down to the greenery on the chandelier mm-hmm. i wanted the the greenery and the red and gold all this okay. pop so that's why i did it but now that it's just hanging there bare it's naked i've removed its clothing it needed its shades taken off so now so it's just bare bulbs. like a dining room table should we yeah. have? Sh- is it for is it for looks or is it for functionality? What are you telling me? It's for- I think it's a little bit of both. I think it is I mean, for I both. I think That's, it's yeah. the look that Long you want to put out there. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's also if you want to filter the light a little bit more and you don't want to be staring at. You know, sometimes a lot of the chandeliers that we have right now, you want to see that filament bulb, and that's part of the design yes. of the chandelier. Mm-hmm. And then other times, you want it to look. Um, like yeah. super finished off so you want to put these shades on it that can mm-hmm. bring in a color um and some personality into that room um got a visual aid oh, oh. Yeah. yes i know you can't see this on the radio but i brought in a tiny little lamp that has an led and an incandescent because what you just said cued that in because when you look at these things illuminated you know let's just look at this by itself but you can see that's an incandescent and that's what we're used to seeing so that's got sparkle you yeah. see the sparkles yes. kind of smudged with fingerprints but Again, that's a case you would probably want to, you could do a bare bulb with that. Uh-huh. But oh. if you're switching over to these guys, you know, for the same equivalency, that's not so pretty. Yeah. I don't like seeing that. I know, and it's intense. But you have but, it on a dimmer. So. But again, this so, uses yeah. like two watts of power to give you what this is using 60. Right, So, right. But again, going to the shade thing, you want to cover that with a shade. And that's part of my issue I have now with, with these yeah. bulbs is I cover those with a shade because I don't like that look, unfortunately. Yeah, especially when they're off and they're yellow. That right there. Yeah. Right. That's not natural. pretty. It, yeah, it's just it draws your eye to it for mm-hmm. some reason. But I think as LED technology continues to improve, I think we're going to see this change. And I have some of these in, in an opaque white as well so that I don't have to see that at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't that's like the white bulb as much. Yeah. But Can I use a, a shade on an old chandelier that I haven't switched out yet that I don't like? Will it help update it? Or is it just going to look like I'm putting a lipstick on a pig? Ooh, that's a tough one. I mean, I'd have to see the pig. I'd have to see the pig. I'd have to see the chandelier. And the shade of lipstick. I mean, I Mm -hmm. think if you want to update it, usually you're pulling everything off. One of the big things that we've done at Ballard, you can put that down. I was just going to kind of show, but the candle sleeve Uh is, you know, I think a while ago we used to have all the faux dripped candle mm-hmm. wax right. on all of our sleeves Ew. whereas now we're really trying to clean them up yeah um and yeah. a lot of times we're making them metal um to match the fixture and oh. not just like the white or ivory although sometimes i think that's great too but i love kind of matching the sleeves to the color of the uh, fixture and then having them be smooth and sleek and yeah. not having the faux Drip. I mean, because we were all so convinced that it was an actual That's candle. It's a real candle. Right, yeah. right exactly. The, the yeah. wax really, uh-huh. right. really was convincing. Yes. But so. at Christmas, it's nice to have drippy wax. That's what I put on the Faline that was redone. I put drippy wax because it's Christmas time. You know, it's candles. You want drips. You know, but, <laughs> Some do. Some but do not. But drippy drip on You have a lot of energy. Ones. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes. But, yes, I think shades can be amazing. I think they can totally <laughs> bring it pity. more coastal. If you have, We have a seagrass shade that kind of feels that way. Or you can have some really fun pattern or prints brought into it. I mean, we some of our customers send us pictures of holiday decorating from their chandeliers where they put a garland or really, you know, beautiful plaid bows on the arms of the chandelier as well as... Um, coordinating with the shades and I think it can make a really nice statement um, for the holidays and throughout the year right um, I kind of like both it depends on the mood of the room really yeah, right. and the style okay 
Yeah, I love a really simple arm chandelier that you can you can adorn with things like greenery at Christmas time, or you can put a floral wreath or something on it, at, you know, of real flowers on it during like Easter time or in the spring when you have it, some kind of a get together at your house. You know, just simple. You know, with just mm-hmm. a few arms, not with any crystals hanging on it. But that's also a fun thing to do. Yeah. And shades are a great way to dress up any chandelier. I think you know to put some pretty clothes on them. Right. <laughs> it's like so an accessory. Speak. Yeah. There you so go. Speak. Okay, I think we should skip our decorating dilemmas today, guys. We Is it late? Yeah, we, we had a lot to get through. Yeah. So I think we need to... I think there's anything good we tips. didn't yes. hit on. Yes. Did we get we them We didn't all? hit on what's trending and the you, finishes. You talked on the shades. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we talked I a little bit about I say that it. Rattan okay. is trending. Rattan. <laughs> Rattan. I was going to say artisan, very textural. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think that's big. And I don't loving. think brass is out, by the way. No. I don't either. Well, mm-hmm. the antique, okay. but not bright, I know you said, is brass. it on the way out? I was like, um, no, I do not think so. I don't think so. I, okay, great. I would, that was... You were just trying to, you were I was trying trying to, to stir s- me up, yeah. and it worked. <laughs> well, the thing not we didn't, on the way out. The thing we didn't mention was ceiling fans, and just, just to uh. say this... Ceiling fans sometimes have a practical purpose in a room, and you have to have it. I have a, a couple of rooms that have to have fans in them. But if you don't have to have one, put up some piece of jewelry, something really pretty... And I don't like light kits on ceiling fans. You haven't yes. met my husband. He wants a ceiling fan in every room, and he wants a light, light kit. Light kit. I don't but why like does he want the light with the fan? Because he wants the more light, the better. Is what is what his, is he what like he's operating saying. on patients? Yeah, I think he thinks he might be. He's he's got his he's a food operator pretty much, and he does all the cooking, so he's yeah. doing that. I but don't you know. don't have a fan in your he kitchen. He feels okay. like he gets like seasonally depressed, so he's like, the more light, the better. Yeah, but because that does he, make a difference. Right, but I, I think maybe I just need a few more lamps. Yeah, it sounds like you, you should light. exercise your employee discount mm-hmm. yes. and go to the store and buy some lamps. Yeah, yeah. I think we. I think if we add strategically place some floor lamps because mm-hmm. we already have can lights and table lamps. Maybe we get some floor and then mm-hmm. definitely some sconces? bookshelf lights. Yes. Oh, yeah, I love sconces. Do you have a walk-in I closet? I love a sconce. If you have a walk-in closet, yes. put one of those panel lights in there that has like 6,000 Kelvin and just no, have them go in there and stain the closet. Place, yeah. oh, not if there's <laughs> a mirror. I go in the closet. Yeah, no. Not if there's no, a mirror. I'm not trying to go down like True. that. True. <laughs> what? No. Okay, wait. Can we all just agree that you should not have a ceiling fan in your dining room or kitchen? I, oh, there's nothing all that to me more disgusting around into your food. But I do have one in my bathroom when I'm drying my hair and it makes it cool, cool down you you're not a like a sweaty. ceiling fan in your bathroom yeah you must have it's a very a large white, bathroom it's just a white like simple and like it's i mean when you have a lot of hair and you're trying to dry but see that's practical summer, that's what i mean sometimes there's a place where that you, is just, unusual. Unusual. Really, you, you have there? to have one yes i need yeah. that choice. in my life okay but yeah. nowhere i mean pretty much nowhere else just like but no use your kids. air conditioner most times. I just, there's Be something fine. really weird to me or really gross about all of, like, has you don't anyone want to looked in your food? at, yeah, all the dust that's on your yes. ceiling fan blades. It's not gross. if you clean them, Caroline. Yeah, yeah. Hello. How often do you clean or your ceiling? Once a month. Do you, do you really? Seriously? Yeah. Yes. Why would you not? Yeah. Dust Wait, gets is up that there. a check? Do you have a checklist? Like yeah. a monthly no, cleaning checklist? No, but like, yes. they just are dirty. Yeah, turn the fan off and look at the side of the blade that's yeah. taking the, oh, okay. so you're probably better than most people just want to clean it. I mean, it might be on your little step ladder and you get your little tool. And you wipe them all off. Mm-hmm. I just see it like every few months. I'll see it and I'll be like, oh my goodness, we got to get that. Turn that fan control. back on so I can't see that. Apparently, I need a checklist. Yeah. Wow, okay. And just wipe them down, girl. Okay. And I have the Swiffer um, yes. extension That's for exactly the what ceiling you need. fan. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. They, they're smart people. Smart. Well, thank you all so much for yeah, sharing, sharing your knowledge. Today. We yeah. really appreciate it. Okay, and everyone, we are recording this. Um, podcast also in video oh, so if you want to I'm sorry. watch <laughs> I know if you want to watch the video of us chatting, chatting feel free to go in there we also have a really cute podcast room if you want to see that too maybe one day we'll do yes. a tour of it Love it's me. got we got some pink chairs we yeah, have the some famous umbrella pink chairs. Yes. right here um yeah. We have a gorgeous chandelier. Thank you, Valerie. Yay. And um, and also, we're going to talk a little bit more about sizing, the size your chandelier should be in your room, um, how high you need to hang it over your table, just a little bit more in depth about the size because in the YouTube video, we can show you diagrams, and we felt like that would help a lot. So if you want to deep dive into that, go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ballard Designs, and check that out. And um, we're going to try to start doing more video or a podcast. So if you're interested, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Okay. Yay. And, um, well, actually, wait, hold on. <laughs> Don't forget to... 
Don't forget to send your questions to podcastballardesigns.net and let us know if you if you did watch the video on YouTube, if you liked it, um, just because we're curious if everyone <laughs> likes be this. Please gentle. Or, yeah, or for real. Lucky oh. us. Yeah. I don't know that we dimmed the lights enough in here. I know, <laughs> seriously. And they've got 5,000 Kelvin in here, too. <laughs> bringing out all the red tones. Oh. Um, and let's see. Send your questions to podcast at ballardesigns.net. Check out the show notes at howtodecorate.com slash podcast. And until next time, happy, happy decorating. decorating.